Alrighty, hey guys, welcome back to the video, and today I'm going to give you my top tips to make sure you do good in the early game when it comes to Dave the Diver. Let's get right to it. First, you want to collect as much of everything as you can. Now, what do I mean by this? When you are out diving, especially early on, collect a little bit of everything because everything has a purpose, whether big, whether small, everything will help you, especially early on. Later on, you can focus on specific areas because there's extra features added that, you know, you can pretty much negate doing certain things. But when you first start, you want to collect everything. Now here, let me just quickly explain. For example, this fragment right here is gonna help you enhance weapons later on. You need a bunch of these. Good to keep collecting them. They barely weigh anything. Next, uh, you see these little bushes? These will get you um, points in your ecology app, and that ecology app will give you charms, which give you special little bonuses for your diver. As you can see right here, I have two charms. Um, one of these um, I got from a quest, and the other one I got from the ecology app, from collecting a bunch of different sea life, like this little bush. Uh, the wood will help you, um, what's it called? It's going to help you um, get weapons at first, just to construct the weapon from Duff. Uh, you have these seashells, same thing that for the Ecology app. This is also for the Ecology app, all this little sea life. Um, the ore is used to, um, what's it called, enhance weapons and also build weapons as well. And also, they, they do pretty well. It's a, you know, certain ore goes up to even like 40 a piece, which early on is very good for its weight. Uh, next, you got rope that can help you, um, what's it called? make weapons as well Get this guy out the way let's see what else we have over here but pretty much what i'm trying to tell you is collect as much of everything as you can because everything is valuable especially these right here over here beginning of the game silver silver bowls they're worth they're worth 50 a piece which is very good only 0.2 and worth 50 extremely well uh it does extremely well early on what i'm saying is oh well let me get out this guy's way. What I'm saying is make sure you collect as much as you can of everything and diversify what you collect. Don't just collect one thing because you think it's always oh, it's valuable and all the other stuff sucks because then you're going to get to a situation where you're not going to have enough components for this and that and this and that. And it's going to be very annoying looking for those specific components when most of the time, if you just collect them over time, when, you know, for example, a mission pops up and says, let me get five of those, you're already going to have it. And that's the beauty of it, and it's going to make you progress a lot faster through the game. Second tip, I want you to enhance as much as possible, especially early on. So whenever you get a bunch of the same amount of fish, as you can see, I have 25 of these right over here. Click this button right here for enhancing. What does enhancing do? It increases the price and increases the happiness. Now, every single night, you're only going to get a set amount of customers that come in and purchase food. So you want that food to cost as much as possible because that will give you other upgrades that you can purchase all over the map. So therefore, make sure you always enhance if you have enough. If you have the double arrows, if it's showing the double arrows right here, that means there's enough to enhance. As you can see this one, I've enhanced quite a bit, so it's going to cost me a lot. So on the left side of this, uh, what's it called, slanted line, you have your total that you have in your uh, inventory, and this is how much it's gonna cost to enhance. This one is gonna cost me a lot, so I might wanna skip out on that until I have a little bit more of these guys. But this one, for example, it's only gonna cost me six to enhance, it's gonna increase the price by 10. Worth it. Now I only have 19, I might enhance it again. It's only gonna cost 10, I'm gonna have uh, nine left, and they're all gonna cost 77 each. Again, you're losing some, but it doesn't matter because you're going to catch so much fish, especially once you start your fish farm around chapter three, you're going to have so much fish. So enhance as much as possible because you want to, you know, get to the big plates like this one, 265 I have here, 209, 175. You know, this comes from a lot of enhancing. As you can see, I got level five right here. I got a level seven enhance right here. Keep upgrading your plates. And by upgrading, I mean enhance. Third, you want to upgrade your kitchen staff as much as possible and as fast as possible. And by upgrade, I also mean recruiting them as well. So this right over here, at first, they're going to start you off with one free flyer ad. After that, you want to continuously pump out as many ads as you can. Whatever ad you can afford, pick that one. 
I you know once you get close to the mid game even late game internet ads every single time and pick very good uh, people depending on what you want to do if I need an another server there it is that's 150 if I needed someone that's gonna cook I'll probably pick this guy 70 and stuff of that nature and also make sure you upgrade them because if you upgrade them they get special abilities and they get a lot faster like for example as you can see my um uh what's it called my level seven server is a tip master which means she always gets extra money for every single time she serves a plate and also she serves drinks so you don't have to worry about drinks as much and then i have my second server who fills up the wasabi so i really don't really have to do anything everything is done for me and for my cooks their cooking skill is extremely high which means they pump out food as fast as possible so you don't want to fall too far behind because customers as your popular as your popularity grows more and more customers will come in and if you don't have a full kitchen that's fully upgraded as much as they can be you're going to fall behind tremendously you and and boncho can't do it by himself you need to have a good crew and also the guys that are, are in the waiting room if you didn't know we can kind of put this as another little tip you can dispatch them to give you um what's it called seasonings and they'll come back in a day and give you seasonings so if you, if you are full in your sushi bar your main um you know staff fill up your waiting room with extra uh what's it called extra employees and have them uh constantly dispatch and get you seasonings so you can uh what's it called afford the bigger dishes like the reason i just got the um i made them get the mayo is because if i look at my um menu my top dish right now requires may uh mayo and sesame seeds so i want to get as much of that as possible because guess what 265 a plate kind of good fourth make sure you keep up with special events so there's missions that you can pretty much you know do over time they're not going to really fail anytime as you can see i have them right over here on the side but there are also missions that um are kind of like time based and those give you the biggest bonuses so when you try to prioritize what you want to do make sure you check your calendar so your calendar is right over here on your phone and as you can see um it tells you when stuff is so i just had a party yesterday where i had to collect tuna um and i pretty much collected tuna all of these days just so for this party i can get a lot of extra money as you can see i have a lot of extra money now for today if we look at the calendar there is a VIP visit, which means that this guy right over here is going to visit the restaurant and we want to impress him. And as you can see, I have already collected everything I need for his VIP visit. Make sure you uh, meet these timelines. I mean, the, these, um, what's, what's the best way to say it? I guess timelines is the best way to say it. But um, make sure you don't miss these because these give you huge bonuses in various ways you know like the parties um that are labeled in orange they give you a bunch of money if you get the right amount of um ingredients and fish that's needed for that day there was jelly there was a jellyfish party last week this was a tuna uh party this week and now this vip visit um most vips they have a lot of uh i guess you can say clout a big following and the bigger your following is in your cooks the app as you can see, let me just go down real quick. As you can see, the last VIP that visited me has 2,500 he got likes on his post. What this means is the more um, VIPs shout you out on Cooksta, right? Which must be like an Instagram clone or whatever. The more you can rank up and rank ups give you a bunch of rewards. And also, the more customers you're going to receive because obviously people who follow these important people they will come to your restaurant and you'll make even more money. Fifth, in terms of main upgrades for your suit, your air, air tank, your cargo box, I'm gonna pretty much list it off in terms of what, what is more important that you should get as soon as possible. You should prioritize your diving suit and your cargo box and then your air tank, okay? So the game, it kind of helps you out a little bit. Those yellow boxes uh, down below, if you are low on um, air, they will drop those little air, um, little O2 yellow canisters for you whenever they see that you're low. But uh, first, I would suggest upgrading your diving suit to max or as max as you can, then to your cargo box. And um, because you know your cargo starts really slow, but as you get up there, as you can see, I can carry up to 125 now. 
So what you want to do is dive and sue is the most important cargo box and then air tank because especially early on they're going to give you plenty of air down there for you to pick up in terms of like the big blue canisters the small yellow canisters and even the um oysters a little bit farther down so make sure you have the diving suit how i went was i got this first upgrade diving suit then i got the cargo box upgrade then i got the air tank upgrade and then i kept going that way i'll be honest with you the harpoon it's not as important. Uh, there's other ways you can take out the fish. You can take out the fish with a lot of melee weapons, a lot of different bonuses that you can get. And um, I've survived with a pretty low tier harpoon for a while. I just upgraded it now. And this is something you're gonna get later on, which is kind of just like, if you wanna maximize your cash, right? But diving suit, cargo box, air tank. Make sure those are up there first. Sixth, your guns are very important. So if you want to hunt down the bigger fish, and I suggest you hunt down the bigger fish, like the multiple sharks that are out there, kind of like the other, all the creatures with the red sign on them, apart from like the small, like, um, what do you call it? Like the poison fish and like the big little, not the big, but kind of like the fat yellow fish, the big sharks and stuff like that, you're gonna need a good gun. Now, what I suggest, um, what I, pretty much like the most is the basic underwater rifle and eventually you can upgrade that to um this underwater rifle i like it the most because of its high magazine and the damage is pretty good i tried the sniper before but it only has three bullets and the max upgrade is only four bullets which isn't great but whatever your choice of weapon is whatever you're most comfortable with make sure you craft it and whenever the upgrades come you upgrade it as soon as possible it's very important not just for catching fish but you're gonna have to go through a lot of bosses once the beginning stages are over like chapter one and two you're gonna be hit with bosses all the time and if you don't have a good gun most bosses require you to have a pretty good gun or you're not gonna you know really survive or it's gonna take you a lot of tries to do so and seventh and last tip i suggest for you is um do as much of the missions and everything from chapter, uh, what's it called, from the prologue all the way to chapter three. The story and all the extra features like the farm, the fish farm, and everything else becomes available after you know, about chapter three. Late chapter two, chapter three starts. So what I suggest is don't spend too much time uh, just you know diving back and forth, diving back and forth early on. Make sure you do all of your quests as you're diving, okay? Make sure you get all those done as soon as possible because the game really starts to flourish and really starts to give you a bunch of different things to do around chapter three. So get all this preliminary stuff done, but don't spend too much time just, you know, spending like four days just diving without even trying to do any of the quests because in all reality, the game gets really fun around chapter three. Okay, you might think it's fun right now, but so much more happens around that chapter three mark. Okay, so uh, those are my seven tips. Uh, I'm going to do another video soon, but uh, yeah, appreciate all the support and I'll see you guys in the next one.